Thank you for joining today's webinar from LICOR, In Pursuit of Reliable Western Blot Results. The webinar recording and slides will be sent out by email to all registrants. If you have questions at any point during the webinar, please type them into the questions box in the panel on the right side of your screen. Our panelists online will be answering questions throughout the webinar. Our speaker, Jeff Harford, is a Senior Product Marketing Manager at LICOR Biosciences. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff. Thanks for joining our webinar today. Over the years, LICOR has pursued the most reliable quantitative Western blots possible. And as we've explored this area, we've looked to identify, correct, and minimize as much variation as possible in the Western blotting process. Now we've done this through a variety of means, through products, through tools like protocols, and through various service such as like training uh, programs. But as you know, getting a reliable quantitative Western blot can be laborious and time consuming. And oftentimes we find that we're not all that confident in the data once we get it. So have you ever wished to have a more reliable and reproducible Western blot? and reduce the time and effort it takes to get there? If so, then this presentation is for you. I'm gonna be talking about some solutions to help you in your pursuit of a more reliable and quantitative Western blot. So there's been a lot of talk about reproducibility over the years. And I think that we all recognize that reproducibility in the industry is something we all need to worry about. But it's been interesting because what's come out is that Western blots are really not all that reproducible the way they're being done. In fact, it's caused some to challenge whether or not we can even trust Western blotting data. Well, part of the variability and the reproducibility issue comes about because there are really no Western blot standards. Everybody does what they think is right for the Western blot. And what this does is it leads to inconsistency and it also leads to a lack of confidence in your data. If you can't reproduce the data within your lab, how can you have confidence in it? Well, the good news is that Western blots can be robust and replicable. It just requires that you follow a few certain rules. First of all, much as NIH and publishers have talked about is you need to have sound experimental design. You also need to make sure that you eliminate the variables that contribute to variability. You have to do the proper validation steps. And of course, you need to analyze the data correctly. And if you do these things, then your Western blots can be highly accurate and highly precise. So we should look at a little bit about this, how we can do this. So let's take a few look at some of the steps that we can take in order to get better data. And let's start with the area of detection. Now one of the simplest things and one of the beginning things that you can do to get better data is to begin transitioning from film to digital imaging. And one of the things that digital imaging will bring to you that film cannot is the ability to detect two different targets, two different colors, all on the same membrane. This allows you to have your target in one color and your loading control in a second color that allows you to normalize to, to assess for any loading inconsistencies, transfer inconsistencies, and so on. A second thing that by, move, by moving to digital imaging that you can do is you can then begin to move from chemiluminescence to fluorescence. Now chemiluminescence has been around a long time, but one of the things that it brings variability is it is a dynamic and a changing reaction. And so this is part of the reason why even user to user or person to person, you can't get consistency because that reaction changes dynamically over time. But with fluorescence, the signal is always consistent. And so if you image it today, 
next week or next year, you get the same results, the same signal to noise ratios, the same answers. And this can bring a, about better consistency and more reproducibility. A third area by moving to digital imaging is the, the fact that it has a wider dynamic range. And this is an interesting area because one of the things that you want to look at with an, a digital imaging system is you want a system that does not saturate. Because even though you move to digital imaging, many systems out there still reach saturation, which can introduce variability. So why you want to do this is you want to be able to detect on the same acquisition, on the same membrane, the weakest bands and the strongest bands so that you can find the combined linear range for both your target and your loading control. This is going to tell you how much protein you should be loading onto your experimental gel. Now, if you're using a digital imager that saturates, that limits how many data points you can get. You won't get the weakest and the strongest, and so it's going to reduce the amount of linear range you can detect. Let's look at this from another perspective. So as I mentioned, when you're loading your target protein, you want to detect the linearity and make sure that you are detecting within the linear range. But many people don't realize that you need to also detect the combined linear range of your internal loading control. And so as you are loading more and more, maybe 5 micrograms, 10, 20, 30 micrograms of protein, along that line you're going to find the linearity for your target. Down here is the noise, and up here is saturation. And with an ideal situation, the detector of the instrument will not be the limiting factor. So this saturation that we're talking about here is membrane saturation. You can't get more protein bound to the membrane at this point. And so once you've found the linear range of your target, that's not enough. You also need to know what the linearity of your loading control is so that you can find the combined linear range. And that's going to tell you you should be loading oh, maybe 10 micrograms of protein on your experimental analysis. So then when you're quantifying the data, if you see up or down regulation, the data is accurate and it's reproducible. Without doing this, if you're only detecting in the linearity of your target, but not your loading control, the data becomes variable. And so it's really important that these three things can bring digital imaging, can get you better data that's more reproducible. The next area I'd like to talk about is reagents. And this has been a to big topic of conversation as well. Of course, there's many reagents that you can use out there for Western blotting. And there's many very good manufacturers of reagents. But it's really important that you don't assume that the, the manufacturer is validating your antibodies, is validating your reagents. You want to go with a manufacturer that you trust, that you get consistent, lot-to-lot -lot consistency, whether it's your antibodies or your normalization reagents. This is really crucial for getting the very best data. You also want to make sure that the reagents that you're purchasing have, Im have been optimized for the system of detection. For example, Lycor offers a total protein stain called REVERT. This is a preferred method of normalization from publishers, and it's been optimized on all Odyssey instruments. So make sure that the reagents that you're getting are not only quality controlled, but optimized for the system that you're working with. The next area where you can improve your reproducibility is the data analysis area. And of course, you can do everything else correctly, get a pretty image, and move into data analysis, and you can totally end up with an inconsistent or an incorrect answer. So this is an important area to think about. Now, it's interesting that through the last few years, publishers have started to put together some guidelines on what you can do in order to get a more reproducible Western blot. 
JBC, for example, has put together six different steps which are really vital for the reproducible Western blot. For example, antibody validation. Of course, you want to make sure that your antibody is specific to the target. Otherwise, it's not going to be reproducible. You also need to validate that you're working within the combined linear range. We just talked about this, but if you're loading outside of the combined linear range on your experimental analysis, you will not be able to quantify your data. So you have to make sure that both your target and your loading control are in the same combined linear range. Third, if you're wanting to use housekeeping proteins as your loading control, you need to validate those, that they're not changing due to the experimental conditions. This is a very big topic of conversation, and because of this, many publishers prefer to see a total protein stain. But again, if you're using a housekeeping protein, make sure you've validated it. Then, once you've done all your validations, you need to make sure you normalize your target using loading controls. And you need to make sure that you do it correctly. While you're doing all this, you need to also do the proper replicate analysis, which is oftentimes done incorrectly. And then when you start handling the data, you need to handle all of the data correctly and not be modifying the data in any way, shape, or form. So what JBC and other publishers have laid here is a perfect foundation for us to get started on getting high-quality, reproducible Western blots. Now, it's interesting because all of the things that they've brought out here, we find that data analysis is necessary for. In fact, it's crucial. Now, Image Studio Lite is a fantastic software from Lycor that has been, it's the industry leading Western blot software. It's easy to use. You can use it on Macs and PCs. You get really high quality results out of it and it doesn't alter the raw data, which is great from a publisher perspective. However, what we need to keep in mind is that Image Studio Lite was built before all these best practices and recommendations were put forth. So if you take Image Studio and you work through the process of validating antibodies, finding combined linear ranges, validating housekeeping proteins and normalizing, it can become very laborious. It can become very time consuming. In fact, what you'll find is that it generally requires three to five other software packages just in order to analyze your data. And this in and of itself lends itself to user-to-user -to -user variability because each user uses the different software packages differently. So if we just look at the recommended Western blot workflow that publishers have put forth and look at the antibody validation, linear range validation, and experimental analysis, if I was to ask you how long does this workflow take, what would you guess? Well, it just so happens that we at Lycor, as experts in Western blotting, have gone through this analysis. And for example, we've put together Image Studio and gone through the process here. And Image Studio does a great job of calling the bands very quickly, very efficiently, but then you have to export the data to Microsoft Excel. You have to add columns. You have to put formulas together. You need to create graphs, bar graphs, and scatter plots. You need to do all of this, CVs and fold changes, and all of that takes time, and it in and of itself introduces the potential for error. Not only that, for an expert, it generally takes more than an hour in order to do this. So what we realized with all of this was that innovation was needed. Image Studio is a fantastic band calling software, but is it the right thing? Well, the innovation that we saw that was necessary is we need a single software package for Western blot analysis that can incorporate these best practices that publishers have put forth. And what we need this software to do is efficiently step through every single step until you get to the final results. 
And ultimately, you should get the same results regardless of user or lab. If a single image goes in and is analyzed by your entire lab, you should not expect different results. Finally, the software needs to be able to generate full results and reports that can be shared with collaborators or even publishers with the data that's necessary for the analysis. So what Lycor has done is we have now introduced Imperia Studio, which is the very innovation that was needed. Imperia Studio is now is, takes you on this journey to exceptional Western blotting data. And what you're going to get is you're going to get this expert level analysis, but it's made very simple. Even the statistics, the CV percentages, the uh, fold changes, the replicate analysis, all of these things are done without user intervention and accurately giving you a final result. So once you've started using Imperia Studio, you'll never look back to the old way of doing things. So now let's take a look again at this recommended Western Blot workflow. Remember, Image Studio and Excel took over an hour and introduced the potential for error. Imperia Studio, you never leave the package, and all of this analysis is done within a mere set of minutes. And in the end, since you're getting the same consistent data from user to user, this lends itself to confidence when you submit it for publication. All right, given that information, I think the best thing that we can do at this point is do a live demo. And of course, since it's Imperia Studio, it's only going to take a few minutes to go through and show you the brilliance of the software. All right, before I go through the step-by-step -step workflow of just showing you the process of working through an antibody validation, combined linear range validation, and normalization, I thought it may be interesting just to show a couple of the things that we've talked about. For example, the antibody validation, this is a validation that's already been done, but these are things that publishers would really like to see, information about the antibodies, demonstration that the antibodies are specific to the targets and so on. Imperia Studio is going to allow you to quickly go through that analysis and have all that information whenever you're asked for it. We also talked about a combined linear range validation. So for example, it, oftentimes I stop in a lab and I'll ask them, how much ge generally protein do you load onto your gel? And they may, you know, say 20, 30 micrograms. And if I ask them how they empirically calculate that, uh, that's generally never done. However, with publishers, they've suggested some best practices, and that is finding the combined linear range. And here we see both a loading control against a target, and we see the curves from a dilution series. And we can see that the linearity or the combined linear range is about 6 micrograms. And oftentimes, if we're out here 20, 25 micrograms, that may not be within the combined linear range. The other thing, just showing an example of a combined linear range where there was no combined linear, linear range, which would suggest you need to choose a different loading control. If you're needing to validate a housekeeping protein, that uh, showing that it's not affected by your experimental conditions, Imperia Studio allows you to do that as well. And here we can see the housekeeping protein is compared against a total protein stain. And you would be able to make the assessment, well, is this change, is, is that due to the experimental conditions? Maybe so. And you can draw the conclusions on whether or not you need to choose a different housekeeping protein or just use a total protein stain for your normalization. And then finally, the normalization process. This is where you can go through the full analysis with your validated antibodies, validated combined linear range, and so on. Go through the fold change, the CV variations, generate scatter plots, graphs, and so on. And all of this report is ready for publishers. 
So all of that is easily generated within just a few minutes with Imperia Studio. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to do an experiment here. And so when I first create an experiment, there are no experiments in here, but we will start with doing an antibody validation. And first thing that we'll want to do is bring in the uh, particular image. This is the image that we want. And so And what you would do is you would fill out the information about the antibody, both the primary and the secondary antibodies, so that anybody that was trying to reproduce this later would be able to get those antibodies and reproduce that data. And I won't go through that process here. But then we'll uh, go ahead and find the lanes. And in this particular case, we have seven lanes. And we can make sure that uh, the boundaries go through the middle of each lane. All right. And in this case, we have that first lane is the molecular weight marker. We can specify how much we loaded in each lane. And the molecular weight marker that we used, we can choose those bands to show that our antibody is specific to our target. And then finally, we're going to indicate where those bands are that, that is the target. And at that point, we now have a report that tells us all about the antibody the molecular weight, and so on, and we can specify if this is a good antibody or not. All right, so the next uh, validation we're going to do is we're going to do a combined linear range validation, and we'll do that using a total protein stain. So the first step is to go ahead and bring in some images, uh, an image of your total protein stain as well as your target so that we can calculate the combined linear range for both of those. And so this is combined linear range validation. And as I mentioned, this is revert total protein stain. This is gap DH. And we got to find the lanes to get started here. So draw a boundary. There's 10 lanes here. And we can adjust that boundary if it's not quite down the center. There you go. And first lane is a molecular weight standard. And then we have a dilution series. And then we will specify the molecular weight bands here. And then we are ready to go with the target as well. Everything should be the same. This is an 800. size standard. And then we're going to find the bands. There we go. And in this particular case, if there's a band that needs to be adjusted, we can just move it down. And then we have a nice linear curve there. And now at this point, we're ready to go and adjust our combined linear range to where the green overlaps. And it looks like roughly around 6 micrograms is the middle 
of that combined linear range, and so that's the amount of protein that we'll want to load onto the gel. And so at this point, we finish up, and we can say that 6 micrograms, that looks pretty good, and we have now validated our combined linear range. So the last thing that we're going to do here is we are going to then do the experimental analysis using a total protein stain. And so what we'll do is we'll bring in again the images and select both the uh, loading control, which is revert, as well as the target. Bring those both in. And in this case, this is a revert total protein stain. And this is a target. And we'll go again through the process of defining the lanes here. Now in this case, there are 13 lanes on that. And so, again, we can just make sure those boundaries are where they need to be. Make sure all those go down the middle. And here's where we assign, if they, we've got replicates on this particular gel, we can specify which ones belong together, and that will create replicate groups. It's as simple as that. First lane, of course, is a molecular weight standard. We said that we loaded six micrograms. And again, in the uh, size standard, we'll specify those. Make sure everything looks good. And we'll do the same with the 800 channel. Now, almost done with the full analysis here. And we're going to find our target. And now we can do our graphing. And so in this case, the experimental design here was 33%, 66%, and 99% etoposide treatment. We can specify And it uh, automatically generates a scatter plot, which is what publishers prefer when you've got small uh, amounts of data, although a bar graph is an option as well in this particular situation. And so it has all of the information, all of the analysis is done. We're also able to see the full report, and that's ready to go for anybody that would need it. And if you wanted to generate a PDF report, you could do that. You could also uh, generate an experimental file. That will package everything up so that another person, such as a publisher or a collaborator, could open up that full series of data and look at everything that you went through in the full analysis as you went through that process. And so at that point, within just about 10 minutes, you've gone through a full validation of your antibody, validation of your combined linear range, as well as your normalization experiment and replicate analysis. One other thing that I thought that I might point out here is that every time you do an antibody validation, it continues to add to your antibody validation database so that your lab always keeps track of how many antibodies you've analyzed and validated so that you have record of that as well. And if you at any point needed to generate a publication package, you could actually go in and create a publication package And all you need to do is select your experimental analysis, add those in. This is for nature submission. 
and you could export that package and send that over to nature for the editors and reviewers to actually uh, review your data if you needed to. And so that's Imperia Studio. Very powerful, very quick, very accurate. And everybody that goes through that process will generate the same data that gives you confidence. What I'd like to do is just review a few of the key features of Imperia Studio that we've highlighted. So first of all, Imperia Studio follows the best practices recommendations of publishers. We've looked at the different steps that are suggested for the very best and more, most replicable Western blots. And Imperia Studio builds each one of these into the entire software. In the end, it brings about user-to-user -user consistency, and so everybody in your lab is getting the same results, the high-quality, high-confidence results that you can submit to publishers. What's better is the analysis is really, really fast, and you only need a single package to do it all. You don't need to, to have an Image Studio, Excel, GraphPad, Microsoft Word, Adobe products, Imperia Studio can give you everything that you need for submitting your data to the publishers. And in the end, you'll find that you get the highest quality results and your Western blots are truly reproducible. Now with that, we may think that the talk is an, at an end point, but it's not because we talked about some other things that variability can be introduced by, such as protocols. If you were to go to everybody in your lab, you probably find that they're all using a somewhat different protocol for their Western blots. And all of this leads to variability. Well, looking at the best practices from publishers, again, what Lycor has done is we have put together normalization protocols based upon these recommendations so that each of our users know exactly how to get the highest quality data when they're doing normalizing. But not only that, all of these validations and replicate steps need to be taken into consideration too. So the protocols for these are available as well. And then finally, the last thing that I'm going to talk about that introduces variability in the Western blotting process is training. This is an issue that I've run across in the uh, out, out in the world where there's not one specific person that's responsible for training in the lab. And so what ends up happening is everybody in the lab does things just a little bit different. Well, LICOR recognized this as a problem, and so what we did is we put together an online portal called Lambda U. This is an on-demand Western blot education portal so that 24 hours a day seven days a week, your lab can go in and you can learn about the theory of Western blotting, how to do a Western blot correctly according to publication standards. You can see in lab experiments and the process that you should go through in order to do that. And so all of this is also available to our users through the data integrity bundle, which we call it. So as I bring this to a close, we talked a little bit about how Western blots can be really troubling with regards to reproducibility. But we've also introduced that Western blots can be robust and replicable. But you've got to pay attention to a variety of areas. These areas that where variability can be introduced. For example, detection methods. Film tends to have a lot of variability. Chemiluminescence tends to have some variability because of its dynamic reaction. But digital imaging with an imager that has a wide dynamic range and multiple colors for, for t imaging your target and your loading control all within the same blot can really help in this area. You need to make sure you use reagents that are from a reliable and trustworthy vendor and that have been optimized for your detection method. You need to make sure you're using a software that operates within the realm of these best practices from publishers. You also need to make sure you're using the same protocols, 
and the, the training that you're giving is consistent and best upon, based upon best practices. Here at Lycor, all, all customers who order the Odyssey Imaging Systems get our Data Integrity Bundle. This is a part of the entire package to ensure that they get the highest and the most replicable data possible and that the data that they're, they're generating, they can have confidence in. So at this point, I'd like to encourage you to contact us today to learn how you can have con confidence in your Western blotting data.